this game, I've seen some, some people bitch and moan, it's like, oh, it's only like, it's like 16 hours. I'm like, 16 hours is still a bit of a long time for a game. I know it's because it's people, are, people are so, like, needy now. In that 16 hours, they need everything. Yeah. It's not like it can just be 16. They need, like, story, they need character development, they need everything you'd get in a three-hour film in 16 hours of gameplay, and it just doesn't work like that with games. Like, exactly. games need more time to flesh out than other mediums do. Exactly. Like... With this, I don't. If it if I wrap it up in sixteen hours, then that's that's a good sixteen hours spent. If it, if it's yeah. ended and I've done everything, then cool, I had fun with it. Like I'm not gonna bitch and moan. It's like why wasn't it sixteen hundred hours? It's like it makes no sense. The shit would get boring. I guarantee you that if this game was sixteen hundred hours long, this shit would be trash. And yeah. people need to really just come to frank, come to terms with the fact that not every good every good game can last forever. Like even my one of my favorite games of all time. Jet Set Radio is very, very short. You can finish that game in two hours. Like yeah. if you know what you're doing, of course, you can finish that game in two hours. And although one part of me is like, "Damn, I wish that never end," but I realized that the the game did everything it had to offer in that two hours. Anything other, anything longer, and it would have been repetitive. I think the only time a game should be you get sixteen hundred hours of playtime, where whereas if the more players that good. A game like Halo 3, I'd probably would have spent that easy. Yeah, well, because like Halo 3 like is always adding content to it. It's always changing things up and switching players. Like with online multiplayer games, that's different because it's like yeah, it's always adding something else. It's all like map packs and DLC. Like with Borderlands, I can see why some not Borderlands. Um, with Overwatch, I can see why somebody would spend all their life on it because there's a lot to offer with that. There's always something new coming out. Even though me yeah. personally, I feel they take way too long to bring out different content. But that's like another argument for another day because I don't want to get into the, the the whole idea of I just don't want to talk about Overwatch because I I don't love that game anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm I've kind of uh, fallen out of love with it. I can't fucking stand that game. Like, uh, I I will say this. Silver? Is that uh, what? Is it, was you in silver? No, they they nerfed Diva and it, there was no point to nerfing Diva. Ah, uh, fair enough. And the, people make the arguments, like, oh, but she's, like, most played hero. It's like, why don't you just buff everyone around her? Because that introduces power creep, man. No, see, th I've read a lot into, like, things like buffing and nerfing. Mm. And yeah. I think, though, I can't remember what the argument was. It was, like, for example, if you gambled, say you had, like, £10, and you gambled and you could win £20... You'll rather want that than losing the money. So say like, I got ten pounds for you. If you guess heads or tails, you, you get either twenty pounds or you get only five pounds. Mm -hmm. People would rather take the twenty pounds because there's a chance of you getting more. Nobody wants to lose anything. So me personally, for something like, like um, like like buffing a character, it should really be done to right to mitigate attention from another character like they should never have like nerfed diva they should have buffed someone like orissa they should have buffed someone like reinhardt it would have made a lot more sense because then you don't have aggressive divas if you have like a reinhardt who swang faster then it would make divas think twice to pushing aggressively if you had like an orissa with a stronger barrier then orissa could hold down choke points more like you, you have to think of it like that there's no point in nerfing something unless it's just completely out of control like, I get why they nerfed McCree, because McCree could literally, like, just mince me any tank. Yeah. But they nerfed him so far into the ground that it's kind of hard to make him viable unless you're just a really good player. Yeah. But I, I'm not, I don't want to get too much into that shit, because I, I feel a type of way about Overwatch, but... Overwatch does that to people. It, uh, I'm so done with it. But, yeah. Back to um, God of War. Let's just talk about. Um, I think we should go back to sort of like play length and such because I thought that was a good conversation. Yeah. So, with God of War, from what it's laid out to me and what it's given me, I know going into it that it's going to be a long game. But mm -hmm. I'm also mature enough to know that, of course, this isn't going to last forever because. The game isn't built in mind to have a super expansive world. It's a big world, but not super expansive. And what I mean by that is there's certain things that'll just make you think that they don't, they haven't put this in mind for people to really play this game 
for more than it's meant to be played. So my first example is traversing different realms. Like, mm-hmm. it's quite long-winded to do it, and you can't skip through having to go through each realm. You know what I mean? you got to walk through that, like, sort of weird little space place when it's, like, mad trees and shit. Yeah. Yeah, like, that is quite long, but that isn't built around the fact that you're going to be doing that a ton of times. That's You're probably going to be doing that maybe a handful of times. Mm-hmm. And, like, you've had you've in the game, how often have you had to go through those things? <sighs> Realistically, mm. you go there, you do what you're doing there, you leave, right? Yeah. You only really need to go back if you need to do, like, collectible stuff. And even then, you only need to go back there once, if you know how to, where to go to get everything and all that stuff. So yeah. really, you go to, like, a certain realm, like, two or three times, depending on if there's extra quests there or whatever. Oh. Um, like, obviously with Midgard, that's, like, your main sort of hub, if lack of a better word. So you're there much more than you would be in, like, Alfheim or Niflheim or anything like that. Um, so, really and truly, it's only, like, three or four times, depending on how quickly you want to do everything. And yeah. if you want to explore and all that stuff, but... But see, you know that with that in mind of having it, those transitions be quite long, you know that it's not built in mind for ha- to have people go back and forth constantly because that will get annoying and long-winded. Yeah, yeah. But like with Borderlands, you know that it's very instant. You just click on the thing, travel there, boom, you're there. Because you know you're going to be I going mean, back and forth. This game also has got no cutscenes, remember? It's a one long, fluid motion. So... I think the reason it is longer is so it can load while the game's still loading, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That like while the game is active. That's probably a technical thing, then. Because there's no, like, cutscenes. It's, like, one long transition, like Horizon is. Mm. But even then, like, it, those little long transitions between worlds and that make you appreciate um, the, the graphics and just the game itself, because it just feels... Yeah. It feels natural. Like, so... Um, what was I going to say? That That's point. where your immersive argument comes back in. Because the game feels so much more immersive. The fact that there's no cutscenes and it's one long thing. Like, you can complete the story without having to go through any cutscenes. And there isn't a game other than Horizon that I can think of that does it like that. Where there's no actual cutscenes. It's literally just... Or no transitions, should I say. Mm. It doesn't, like, cut to a cutscene and then cut back out. It'll, like, transition into gameplay rather than cutting. I love when games do that shit. It's I so really good. Love it when so they do good. Because it's just like, oh, I, it it really balances. Because when, when a game breaks into a cutscene, it's not bad. It's just that when a game just. It can make you feel disjointed, though. It can make you feel like you're taken away from the yeah, moment. Yeah, you're, like, you're literally like, someone like, put the controller down, I'm going to watch a film. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, pretty much. And it's not, it's not always bad. Like, there are some games that just, like, I look forward to seeing a cutscene because it just really makes my fucking nipples rock hard. Like, yeah. I'll give you... A, my One of my favourite cutscenes in the game was on Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and I think you're about to go to, like, the final place, and... Oh, my God, you know what? I, I, I think after this, I have to show you the fucking cutscene. That shit... Like, if you guys know, like, if anyone's watching knows what I'm talking about, or just, like, you get all these Smash players just trying to fight, like, Ganondorf and, Bra- and Bowser and all these evil people... And they just meet up in this one spot and all on like different ships and shit. And it's bro, it's fucking amazing. Like I when people say Nintendo can't do like graphics and shit, man, they gotta look at that shit, because that was a fucking movie. I think my favourite cutscenes are basically anything from Halo 3. <sighs> Halo 3, man. Cause that game's uh oh. You know you know Olivia's not played Halo 3? What? I I know, like I said to, look Halo 3 like, there are certain games that really just round up a, a boy's teenage life. There's Modern Warfare 2, Halo 3, yeah. and, like, a game of your choice. For me, it was yeah. Modern Warfare 2, Halo 3, and Borderlands. That's all I knew. I'd probably say... Actually, yeah, I'd probably say the same. Like, damn. Like, phew. Or Pokemon Colosseum. Or Pokemon... Oh, Pokemon Colosseum. Pokemon Colosseum. For me, like, Pokemon Le- My favourite Pokemon games are... Um, 
Crystal, Leaf Green, Emerald, and Black and White too. Emerald is the one. Emerald is absolutely Emerald is just fucking god tier. Man. Emerald is the pinnacle of Pokemon game. It's so Jesus good. Jesus Christ! Olivia missed that wave as well. But for those of you who don't know, Olivia's my girlfriend. Just put that in perspective. Anyway, so yeah, she hasn't. She missed the Pokemon wave. That's crazy to me. And the thing is, like. Like from how she, from the way she enjoys video games, I thought she would have loved Pokemon. That shit would have rocked her world. Yeah. I know. I was, I'm, I'm trying to convince her to like play on 3ds. So we'll, we'll she see. She got an Android to test get on her phone. True, but Actually, then again, she's got a, she's got um fucking Samsung Galaxy. Like my phone has like the battery power of a freaking like of a freaking <laughs> like chainsaw generator. Like that shit is <laughs> nuts. Like. I'll tell you how good my phone battery is. I don't have to charge. I don't have to charge it every day. Oh really? I don't have. To, I don't have to come in and charge it when I before I go to bed. That's crazy. I can leave it, wake up. I'll be on like something like thirty percent. I can go to work, use it, and then probably charge it when I get to work. My S8 is pretty good actually. If you want an iPhone, then I'm not sure about you, but nah, fuck iPhones. I... And Android's great, or I'm not gonna lie. Like I um, I got um, uh, what's a. Chinese phone called a Xiaomi. <laughs> no, do you? But like, I know this shit sounds mad washed, but bruh, it's actually fucking good. Shout out to my friend Imran who like showed me this phone. This that phone was lit. Anyway, but going back, we, this is turning into like a podcast. I swear to God. Honestly, the it, the wildest of tangents. It's turning into a podcast. I might have to continue this. Anywho. With uh, God of War, like in time length, I feel that, like, how lo how many hours did you put into this game? Uh, I don't actually have a way to check. I don't think, but if I was going to estimate, uh, fifty to sixty hours, probably. I think that's reasonable. That's how much I put into 100%. Fallout Four. I put about I think it was like sixty nine hours into it. Yeah, Fallout Four. I did like. 13 days or something stupid. Wow. I didn't... Because I, I didn't get the DLC because I was like a cheapskate and I just didn't want to pay for DLC. Oh, the DLC is so good. Yeah, it's I so should have. I should have. But yeah, no, like, I put 60 hours into the main yeah. game. 60 plus hours. I think that's perfect. I think that's fine for a really big game. Like, yeah, people want too much out of games now. They want, like, 60 hours of non-stop action gameplay and that's just amazing for the whole point. And then they want multiplayer, and they want, like, easy platinums, and they just, I don't know, man. Yeah. People want so much from games nowadays, it's kind of impossible to get, like, the perfect balance. But it I is. think this game does that so well from a single-player game. Like, the game's so satisfying to just play, like, to just look at. The game's, like, beautiful. The gameplay's amazing. Like, the RPG elements aren't too heavy. Mm. And just everything has got, like, the right balance to it. Yeah. It just feels it. It feels good, if that makes sense. It just feels like a good game. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. All right, I'm gonna ask you this question, right? So, how do you like? How do you enjoy the story? Oh, I thought it was amazing. Um, I'm not gonna like spoil anything. Yeah. But there's points in the story where like, oh shit, like there's a, a multiple points which are just like. Is that mad emotional? Yeah, and they just take you... Like... Obviously the game is meant to be kind of like... Boy, and just gritty. Yeah. And just kind of like... Just down a bit, but... There's points where you're like, oh man, even that's kind of like... Dark. Lack of a better word. I think the part where I knew where it was dark... Was... Uh, wow, I'm just failing on this part, I didn't know what I was doing. Um... Wow. Yeah, I'm watching this. I'm watching this kind of like... <laughs> I'm watching this upset. There what, you go, you did it. What was I doing? Anyway. Good shit. Oh, my days. Like, yeah, so... I think the part where I, I saw it get quite emotional is when he went through that, that... What was that? I think it was like the Bifrost to get that thing. And like he was gone for like... What, I think it was like hours on the outside. Oh, yeah. Was like kids 20 outside seconds. What is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was like, wow, oh, that man. was touching. That was like, fuck. It wasn't even that. It was just Atreus' reaction to when you came out. It's like, you was gone. Like, oh. I was like, oh, man. And he's In like, the field. I was only gone for a minute. It's like, no, you weren't. And you see all the bodies there. I'm like, damn. 
Yeah, he 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 went in. He went in. He really yeah. went in. No, nah, Creo should have gave him mad props for that shit. Like he's trying to yeah. mad tough. And like, nah, should have finally finally pat him on the back, but no. Nah, nah bro, there. you you gotta let that guy have it. Not from Dad of War. Dad of War. <laughs> no, nah, like I think it's really it's an interesting dynamic because for all the times we've played God of War, we've always just seen Kratos as this fucking bravado dude like he's just like yeah fucking the just this beefcake who just fucks people up just the chuck norris of video games like we didn't see yeah, any man. weakness in him and to see him have a child and shit i know like some people that i see on the internet you know anyway these people are trolls but you know it's like oh, he's raising he's he's raising his his a dead mom's kid like, it's like, yeah, chill. <laughs> like can bro. i just can i just say as well that they did a very good job making Trias not annoying the trailer wasn't like, that annoying. I'm so the thing far, is, I'm right, so with like a lot of stuff, like kids and stuff are just fucking irritating for no reason, just because they can't act, whatever. But they did a very good job in this one of not making him super irritating. It's like it's like, like a part... coming of age experience. Yeah, there's parts of the game where you're like, really, he's actually doing this. But there is never a part where you're like, wow, he's proper annoying me right now. Yeah, if that makes sense. I, I, yeah, like because. The thing is, like, people really have to, like, put themselves in his shoes. Like, he or, like, he's, I'm going to guess he's, like, what, nine, ten years old, maybe? I'll say maybe eight years old. Probably something like that, yeah. About and that. people have to think back at that time of you being a kid. Think, Really think of it. You're a fucking seven, eight-year-old kid that has to maybe scatter ten. your, maybe ten, that has to scatter your mum's ashes on the top of a mountain <laughs> in a mythical land. And your father is the most coldest dickhead on the planet, and you think, and you're gonna give Atreus shit for like asking some really basic questions. Boy. Come on, guys, come on. I I don't care. Like, if I was a kid, I would be asking a multitude of questions because I'm like, why on earth do I have to do this shit? <laughs> like, people don't give him enough credit. I feel sorry for him because people are trying to say, ah, he's a fucking annoying little brat. It's like you don't have kids, man. You lonely bastards. You niggas don't know shit. You, you Can don't... I just um, make another note that how fucking good the voice acting and everything in this game is? Like the acting and just the directing of this is just impeccable. Yo. Absolutely amazing. I know this is mad off topic, but I'm going I'm to bring myself back after this. Have you heard this video of Barry White? All right. <laughs> Like I just on the voice of on the topic of voices oh, and shit. I'm, I'm I'm looking at the gameplay and I'm seeing like all the crows and stuff you're missing. And it's breaking my soul, man. Oh, all the Odin's wow. ravens. Oh yeah, I, I, ju I just saw that. Oh, one. thank yeah. God for that. Oh man. One out of fifty one. One out of fifty one. Ah. Oh! Nah, I'll, I'll I'll fix that. I'll fix that. I've I'll seen about that. six in this video already. I'll I'll fix that one. But yeah, there's like a clip of Barry White and he's doing like some. I think he's advertising something. And he gets frustrated. I think he like messes up on a word. He's like, "Fuck this shit!" But in like, the most smoothest Barry White voice I've ever heard. And I'm thinking, Jesus, I wish I had his voice. Imagine getting cursed out by Barry White. I don't want to. I did. <laughs> I don't want to imagine getting cursed out. By Barry White. <laughs> you don't want to get cursed out. Nah, nobody does. But yeah, you you're right though. The voice acting's amazing. Like Kratos' voice, man. Damn. The bad thing is, the dude that does this guy's voice, he doesn't even need to change his voice. That's just him normally. Damn. Imagine picking up girls with that voice, bro. <laughs> Wild. Boy, just girl. 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 Damn. Like Teddy Pendergrass and Barry White in one. Like, Jesus. But no, nah, voice acting supreme. I think in a game like this where you can tell that the animation is all mocap. Like, all of this is mocap from just how... Like, you can look at that, the, the idle animation for Kratos, and you can just tell it's not some shit you can animate. Like, I've done, yeah. like, animation in uni, and doing little idle animations like that, where you have to be super precise and get all the limbs looking right and shit, that is hard. That is so hard to do. And so, I, with a game with mocap, you have to have good voice acting to resemble that uh, body language. Yeah. So, um, with things like Skyrim... I know that with a game that big can't do mocap because no. it's going to take a lot of man hours to do. And of course, I don't like knock them for that. It's just that... That game would break if it had mocap. Let me just put that out there. Yeah, the fucking engine will go all over the place. But with a game like as big as that, it can't have mocap because it's just like we need to get as big as possible and it's not really so much about the emotion. It's more about the adventure. 
but I feel with a game like this where it is part of motion and adventure, you do got to get that mocap on fucking point and that voice acting, because you know Sony likes to uh, go for cinematic experiences as well. So it's it comes with the territory, really. Yeah, your gameplay is fucking me up, man. I, know, I see you turn around like, oh shit, I've got too far. Yeah, honestly, like, I... Also, the, way... the puzzles, oh, they're not really puzzles, but the platform in this game is fucking spot on, man. Oh yeah, it's great. Because a lot of it is just that, you, there's no, <laughs> this, oh wow. Yeah, this pissed me off because I'm thinking, what the fuck? But I get it on the next one, I think I get on the next one, yep. Yeah. Wait. Wait. There we go. Hey, that was the weirdest jump I've ever seen. Yeah, it's because I well, I didn't have it really aligned properly. But, yeah, like, the way how I play video games, like, it may look like I'm retarded, but it's just me kind of, like, slowly processing everything. <laughs> like, I play it's your game... old man brain. I get it. Yeah, like, the thing is, though, like, with, with fast-paced games like COD, I, I, I'm comfortable with it, but with things like this where I'm like, I really want to take in every little bit of detail yeah because i don't want to miss anything even though i've missed like 24 ravens probably at this point but <laughs> like i think i mean everything... quad sports muscle memory though you don't really have to think about it yeah this is, this is what i've been teaching olivia about cod is that like it gets to a point where you don't do things using your brain you just do things on instinct it's yeah like you do something because it feels right to do it yeah because i'm trying to show her like things like um uh like just maneuvering around the map and yeah. if you're watching me play and it's like why didn't you just go that way because it's like well if you look at your map we're spawned here so on that opposite side they're going to be there and you don't yeah, yeah. and how like the cover is from there to there it doesn't give me a power position so I don't want to go there because I'm just going to get fucking clipped to death yeah so she's getting shit like that where you don't necessarily it's not explicitly told but you just learn it how you, as you go along but it's when you start like attaching meaning and like words to it is when you start kind of getting the detail. Yeah. But going back to this is how I how I play it and like because some people I don't like to rush games like this. This is why I didn't I was unsure about reviewing it because I I don't want to rush this. Like this is like a like a like a free course meal. Yeah. And you want to take your time with it. It's not like I'm going to fucking favorites or Morley's and I'm just gonna <laughs> throw back some like chicken and chips and then go about my way and shit. Yeah. This is like a proper meal where you gotta like take time on how you like like I wanna try star the, Yeah, I wanna get course. the potatoes first, I wanna mix the gravy in with this, I yeah, wanna yeah. get some vegetables with this, I what am I gonna have for dessert? Am I feeling a chocolate cake? Or am I feeling yeah, yeah, every day. Yeah, or like you wanna wash it down with some wine. Like it's this is a <laughs> this is a game where you gotta really I'm sorry, I get so like into food and games because there's a lot of the comparisons when it comes to food and games. Like for me, yeah. I, I call Borderlands Two a pepperoni pizza, where it has every it has it does everything right and it adds a little bit of your favorite. I say it's more meat feast for me. Meat feast and Destiny Two is like no Destiny One is a to me, it's a pizza that has anchovies, like jalapenos, Pineapple. pineapples, but no fucking cheese or tomato sauce. <laughs> And no dough. No dough. Just <laughs> <laughs> answer a piece of pineapple on a plate. What kind of friggin' weird person does that shit? No, uh, the thing is, I actually, I, I fucking love Destiny, man. I put so many hours into Destiny. And even <laughs> Destiny 2, I'm playing a bunch. But, like, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. So, I, I, I don't know. I've, I've, I've spoken about Destiny, like, till I blew in the face about why I just don't get into it. It's just... I don't know, it's, man. It's not Borderlands. It's basically the overall argument. I think for me, it's just like the things that it's like the things that it's meant to do good, it does okay, and the things it's meant to just do kind of residually, it does really well. So, yeah. for things like the loot, I don't like how the loot is really dealt with because it just feels like. It just feels too much based on luck, and I know that that sounds crazy coming from a loot system, but I want to feel like I have some sort of chance of getting some good loot when I do this, like this certain thing or this certain mission or whatever. But it just feels like it's a draw of the like, it's luck of the draw to me. That's the same with Borderlands, though, really. Like <laughs> you can farm a boss to, for no end, but you won't get an Infinity Pistol from what's his face, Doc Mercy, whatever his name is. 
I think they've, so like, I think they've patched it because ever since I've been playing it since probably I don't know mid 2017. Hundred percent buffs the job rates. Hundred percent. I've got I was them, playing like, with. Mm. I was I'm um, starting a playthrough of zero, and um, first time killing Boom Boom at level six, it dropped me a fucking. Um, Is that the orange package. grenade? Yeah, yeah. Like fucking what was it? I think from playing from about 2012 until about 2015 is where I just played Borderlands religiously. I yeah. had only gotten one Infinity Pistol from a, from a drop. And okay. from playing from 2017 onwards, I've gotten about three. They've definitely enhanced it. They've enhanced 100%. that shit. But, oh yeah, this is... Uh, if you just look at here, I've just got this... My freaking video is just doing a, a madness because basically I... Can't remember what I was doing. I think, I think I went to go take a shit in this time, which I just put. I just left the game. The and classic. Like, and then, like, I was talking to Olivia about something, and then I realized, oh shit, I'm recording. I should really stop playing the game again. So <laughs> you're gonna be looking at this for a little bit. But yeah, um, uh, fuck, I can't remember what we were talking about before we went into like Borderlands. Um, shit. Probably the balance of the game. Something like that. Something like that. Somebody in the comments will tell us, but... Um, I, so far, um, I like how they've dealt... They're, they're dealing with the uh, Leviathan Axe. Because... Yeah. It doesn't feel like I'm just going to level it quickly. I feel that pro the progression is really... It's like... A t it's like a pot of gold put on a TV. It's like, no, you got to work for this. you got to work to get your axe, like really good so how much more have you played of this uh i i recorded this yesterday okay so i probably went a little bit further after killing the dragon boss and that was it so okay. in the mean i think I really that's a really good fight by the way that's such a good fight. good fight i i think i think i dealt, I dealt with it decently i think i did okay some parts i'm like fucking around and so yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting the hang of it. But I think it was like the first half I, I was like doing decently. And then like the last part, I was like, yeah, I, I need to really remember this is Dark Souls one, all, one on one. So I'm like, yeah. But no, nah, like, um, I like They've done a very good job of making it feel like you're actually progressing with your gear. Because there was games like, um, Division, where you can have any gun and it'll pretty much do the same job. It will just have different perks on it. Yeah. But I think, like, the loot perspective of this game, making it so like you have like different attacks with your um, your runic attacks and whatnot. It's done such a good job of making it feel like they actually do damage. Does that make sense? I feel like those are gonna really matter when I get this. Yeah. Game. Yeah. You. You. Uh, yeah. Because at the moment. It's like I'm thinking too much about stats because I've always been like a numbers guy when it came to RPGs. Yeah. So I'm thinking oh, I want to I want to boost this stat, but it decreases my strength and my defense. But I want to get more strength because I feel like I just want to just cut through shit so easily. Yeah. But then I'm thinking, what about luck and like runic and? Because oh, um, to to bounce off that, I was playing it and I was talking to my boy from work, and then uh, I asked him what his stats were like. And he sent me a picture and I was like, oh. And then I sent him a picture. And this, bear in mind, he was like probably about four or five story missions ahead of me. Like he he was very near the end of the game. And uh, I sent him mine. He was like, shit, I'm doing something wrong. Because I was like up 100 on like some of the main stats, like strength and defense and stuff. Just because yeah. I've been like exploring and grinding some of the um, stuff. So, yeah, they just, it's just, they've just done a good job, man. I don't know. It's hard to quantify into words. The game's just, it's it's amazing, it genuinely is. Yeah, I think they've taken good elements from different games. So when it comes to the, the loot system, I think they carefully took parts to which would work in a single player setting. So there's nothing really to, anything to do with drop rates. They've taken any all in all like things like drop rates out of the equation yeah. entirely, and they're saying no, these weapons are going to be scattered 
either in shops or just where you discover them in chests. And that's much better to do that. I don't think that there's yeah. a lot of weapons or like armor or runics to even like collect. I feel that there's like a finite amount. They put them in some different chests here and there, find some bosses or in some quests, and then you, it's just really up to you just to go and find them. And that's how you should really do a loot system in a single player game. In a multiplayer game or a co-op game where they're expecting you to come back to this place over and over again, then that's a different like conversation altogether. But here, they've taken that little element. I was like, all right, I I need to find these chests. I'm not gonna find this from just killing like random enemies. Yeah. So it encourages people to explore, and this this is the thing that I would feel gamers don't do enough of is exploring. Like, I can also make the same argument that game developers don't give us a reason to do that, because sometimes how they lay things out is like, what's the point of exploring? if I'm not going to find anything useful here. Yeah. But with here, this game, it's like, no, like, you need to explore. You need to check every nook and cranny. Un- leave no st- stone unturned, personally. Yeah. Like, a game I liked exploring was Crackdown, the first one. Because oh, I just so love good. finding those agility orbs. So good. I really... What's going on with that game anyway? I know, like... It's oh, game. man, don't get me started. I really want that game to come out. The thing is, it's going to come out, it's going to be shit. I know it. And yeah, I really yeah. want it to be good, because I fucking love the first one. I even like the second one. The second one was fucking Duty Bar. Yeah, I still enjoyed it. Duty Bar. I finished that game, and, like... I think I got on Christmas Day, and I finished it by the end of Boxing Day. Yeah, it was... Oh, I was man. so disappointed. Uh, but, no, I really want that game to be good, but... But, that game will have loot in it. I'm calling it. Oh, fuck, I hope not. Oh, there we go. So, I'm back after doing a long poo. Mm-hmm.